What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about an extension that allows you to quickly create and swap out proxy models inside of SketchUp. This can be very important for increasing performance with higher polygon and uh, high resolution texture models inside of SketchUp. Um, before we get started, I wanna thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So a big thank you to Gabrielle Rossi, Roderick Kaysen, Andy Donald, John Rene Rodrigue, Stephen Phillips, and Pankaj Narnolia. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe, maybe vote on the extension I cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. So this week, my patrons voted and they selected a new extension from Fredo 6 called Fredo Ghost. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the issues you can run into when you're working in SketchUp is when when you start working with higher polygon models or models that have a lot of different high resolution textures or things like that, you can start running into some problems with performance issues inside of SketchUp. And so one of the things that we've done in the past to get around this is replacing models with proxy models. A proxy model is a lower resolution or lighter weight model that you swap objects out for in order to increase performance until you need to do a final export of an image or something like that. And so historically, the way that's worked is, let's say you had something like this tree. And this tree is a model that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. It's the low poly 3D tree from Max Achofsky. And uh, it's an 11 megabyte file with a bunch of different polygons in it. And so while that might be lower resolution for a rendering program or something like that, it's a lot of things for SketchUp to handle, um, just from a texture standpoint and also from a polygon standpoint, because it's a larger model. And so historically what we've done is we might take that particular component and we might put like a placeholder component in here. So just like box, proxy or something like that we could call that box proxy and then we would just go into the component section of our tray and we would select that object and we would find our box proxy and we would do a replace selected and so what would happen is we would temporarily replace that tree with a lighter weight model like this box or something that looks a little bit more like a tree and then when you're ready to do an export or something like that you would come back in and you would actually reload that tree back in and you can see how that kind of like moved my tree around a little bit and uh some things like that. So you can get some kind of weird things when you do that. But um, that's historically kind of how that's been done is you swap out one object for a lighter weight object temporarily. So recently, Fredo 6 put out an extension called Fredo Ghost that does this for you. This extension can be found on the Sketchication uh, plugin store, and uh, the extension is called Fredo Ghost and it's 100% free. You do need to have Libfredo installed, um, version 8.9 or higher for it to work properly. But you, I will link to this in the notes down below, but you can download and install this. And uh, basically what this extension does is it gives you a bunch of different ways to create different kinds of proxies. And I will note while I'm on this page, there's a lot of documentation in here. Um, there's a user manual. There's also a quick start section with a bunch of more detailed videos. So if you want more information about some of this, you can find that at this location. Um, but the way that this extension works is you install it inside of SketchUp and then you select an object and you replace it with what's known as like a ghost object and so to start off what you would probably do is you would click on this little uh, ghost icon with the gear on it that's gonna pop up the Fredo ghost studio and there's some advanced features in here that you can show or hide that we'll get into a little bit more um, but basically what this does is this comes in here and this temporarily replaces an object with a ghost file or a proxy file and so what that means is in this particular case, let's say I wanted to take this tree and I wanted to hide all of the faces in my proxy model. I would just select the tree and then click on the button for make ghost. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna create a new proxy file in this style 
inside of SketchUp. And so you can see how for this particular tree, this is going to be a fair amount faster because it doesn't have to load all of those different textures in here because a lot of what was making up that size in this tree was the number of textures. And so you can see I can rotate around and I've already seen just a bit of a performance increase just by doing this. And so you could use this for all of the high polygon things inside your model that are making things run slowly. So what this would do, for example, is you would swap this out for this wireframe or something like or something else until you need it and so that would allow you to fly around in here have that increased performance while you're working and then you could go back and you could just click the button for switch to real. And so you can see how when I switch it to real, it's gonna load back in that original tree with all of the textures in here. And so you can swap this out by clicking switch to ghost, or you can swap it back by switch to real. And so that works for multiple different objects at once. So let's say for example that I wanted to do all of these trees, I could create wireframes of all of those trees as well. So this tree is the 3D tree, and I cannot say this word, just search for this word, and it's by Ganyeeds. And so these are each five megabyte files um, that are inside of your model. But um, when you start adding them up, those make up, those can make your SketchUp model pretty big. Well, what you could do is you could swap those out for a different kind. So like, let's say for example, you could select, we already selected the wireframe, maybe on this one we'd select like a monochrome or something like that. And so you can see how I can select multiple different trees at once and this will go in and this will replace each one of those with a ghost or with a proxy. And it does seem to take a little bit longer when you have multiple trees selected, but you can see how this is going through and this is swapping these out for proxies based on this method that I've selected. So you can see how what that did is that came in here and that swapped this out for a model that doesn't necessarily have the textures applied, but it still has kind of triangles in here for all the leaves and stuff like that. So this just took that and that made that a monochrome model. So that's the nice thing about this is depending on what's slowing your model down, um, you can replace these with different kinds of proxies. So if you have something with high resolution textures, you can swap this out for something that doesn't show the textures. Um, and then when you want those to come Back, you just click switch to real so swapping them back and forth is really easy once those are inside of your model so for this one another example would be since the textures are kind of what's driving the size you could come in here and you could just set this to you could set this to no texture and click on make ghost and so what that would do is that would make a ghost or a proxy copy of this tree that still looks like a tree it just doesn't have those textures in here and so you can see how now that runs a little bit more quickly because it's not loading in those textures so and then I could switch that back really easily. So this model right here, the F1 McLaren, um, this one is the McLaren F1 LM by ZXT. So that one, it's not necessarily practical to select something like the uh, the edge mesh or one of those options because what that's going to do is that's going to create a whole bunch of geometry in here because if you look at the hidden geometry there's a bunch of geometry in here um, so what makes this one kind of heavy is all of the geometry inside of it rather than the textures so for this one I've already created a ghost on this one and what this ghost does is this uh, created bounding boxes by sub object. So your object is still in here, but you're just not showing all of that different edge geometry. So I can swap this back and forth as well to really kind of speed up that model. So you can also create custom kinds of proxies in here as well. So like for example, let's say that we were to select this car, um, you can click on this little button right here and you can create different kinds of proxies based on what you want to do. So like I could come in here and I could create this with like a mask color and adjust opacities and things like that. There's just a bunch of different things that you can do. One of which is you can actually create um, like different proxy objects instead. So like for example, if you wanted to, you could take this and you could create a ghost um, based on any model in here. So I could use like my default model or something like that. And I could just click OK and I could just swap this car out for my me and Bonnie model. 
right here. And then, because um, that's a very lightweight model. You could also use this for trees to swap out 3D trees or like billboards or something like that. And then you could just easily go back to the real version of this whenever you want to. So you can see how that's pretty easy to do. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about for this particular video is the ability to um, have this create proxies that show up based on distance to the camera. So basically what this is going to do um, is basically what this is going to do is this is going to swap these out when your camera's further away and then it'll swap back in your geometry when you're a little bit closer. So that means that when you're further away, like way out like this, this would swap to the proxies because you can't really see these very well anyway. And so um, this particular model is the vignette seating and tables model by Technion. I will um, I'll put the name of that down in the corner down here so you can download that if you want to. But basically the way this would work is let's say that you wanted these four chairs in here um, to be replaced when your camera is a certain distance away. And so what we would do for these objects is we would take them all and we would apply a ghost method like the wireframe or something like that. But then we would go into the advanced features for those and we would check the box for auto switch by distance. So when we do that and we click the button for apply, now when we we turn on auto switch by distance mode those are going to turn to wireframe at a certain distance so you can see how when I check this box now those are going to swap out based on how far away your camera view is so you can see how at a certain point when I zoom out those are gonna swap to that wireframe mode in order to make your SketchUp run faster. And I haven't really played around with this too much. Um, so I, I can't tell you how practical it is in like a large model setting or something like that, but it's definitely something that's interesting to play around with. You can also go into your settings and you can adjust all of these different settings, but in particular, um, you can set when this is gonna auto switch those to the ghost based on how, si how large this is in the viewport. So you can adjust that in here as well. So there are a lot of functions in here for creating proxies. Um, I, I hit on some of them, but not all of them. If you're interested in more information, there's a lot of information in that quick start guide um, that I linked to in the notes down below. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you think this is something that you, you would find helpful, if it's something you'd use, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys